All right, so today, uh, for the third day of class, we're going to talk about Facebook, uh, the biggest social network of all, of all time. So there had been social networks for, for years and years. I remember when we were all perhaps on MySpace, and then before that there was LiveJournal. There's always been social networks, which are places where people congregate uh, for friends and family and such. Uh, Facebook has, has snowballed. I, I've followed social networks for years, and I've seen it growing from when it had the uh, very, when it had the very uh, amazing goal of reaching 200 million users. Well, that was a few years ago, and now Facebook is at 2 billion users. Not million, but billion. So, uh, approximately 2 billion user accounts. Um, every time I've taught this class over the years, and I've taught this class for like the last four or five years, um, Facebook has always grown through all that time, and through all of that time, I always, since I keep up to date with all of this, there's always been like, well, here's the Facebook killer. Here's the next app or the next website that's going to take over Facebook. It's going to be better than Facebook, and none of them have worked, and it's keep grow kept growing and growing, uh, for better and for worse. I cover Facebook on the third day because I would say Facebook is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's very powerful in that it has a lot of potential customers for you. A lot, of, a lot of people are on Facebook. A lot of your customers are most likely on Facebook. So that's a very powerful aspect of it. The other aspect of it, the other side of it, the downside, is that you are not the only company on Facebook. You are not the only realtor on Facebook. You are not the only realtor in San Diego in, on Facebook. You are not the only realtor in San Diego focusing on properties over $2 million on Facebook. Meaning, you're always going to get this competition with so much, so many people on Facebook, <clears throat> you're going to be a needle in a haystack. And that's the double-edged sword of Facebook in that there's a lot of potential customers you can reach, but there's a lot of also competition that is competing with you to reach those same customers, perhaps. So we'll be covering today, of course, the basics to intermediate to advanced as far as we can go aspects of Facebook and how it best works for you um, as a marketing tool. Now what's interesting also as time has gone on as I've taught this class um, it's hard to uh, escape it from the news and such that we hear it over and over about so many sort of like the dark the dark side of all social media not just Facebook I don't want to pick on Facebook but the dark side of all social media in the harassment in the bullying in the misogyny in the troll farms in the foreign meddling in our elections and all of that so yes it is something that I have to have on the back of my mind and I have to bring it to your attention that like the utopic vision of what social media was supposed to be is in danger of being corrupted and co-opted by things that, uh, you know, I know I'm making it sound so dramatic and it's like, well, I just want to use Facebook to reach an audience. But this is something that's permeating all our lives. People are on Facebook all day long. They're on Twitter all day long. They're on Snapchat. They're on all of these networks. And the dark side of it, as we're seeing in the news reports and in the congressional hearings and all of that, we don't know where it's going to go. I try to keep it positive, so we'll, we'll keep it in terms of how can these social networks help your business. But yes, these questions about how is this affecting, has anyone seen like the articles about how Facebook is changing teenagers' minds and how it's making them like more, like less empathetic and like all of this weird stuff. So a lot of interesting things going on that are beyond the scope of this class, but things that I would educate myself on and look up, you know, what's the positive, what's the dark side of, of social networks. We're going to focus on the positive aspects of it, about how we can reach an audience uh, or create a community that reaches uh, the right people. So we're going to cover Facebook. Um, the big idea with Facebook, as, as every other network that we've talked about, is that we have uh, consumers, we have creators. All of the networks had this. I might not have used this terminology before, but as I said on previous days, whatever you learn in one network 
transfers over to another network in various ways, maybe with different terminology or different buttons, but a lot of, all of them have the, these sort of dual aspect consumers, the regular people that use the network. So you can say your customers. And as I said before, I'm using the terminology business and product and customer and such, but this applies to anything. If I'm simply an artist and I want people to see my paintings, they are the customers. If I want people to read my articles, they are my customers. I'm not selling them anything, but I want them to see my content. I want them to consume my content. If I'm the fictional business Victor's Bakery, Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is sell cupcakes. So that's very obviously my consumers are those that are going to consume the cupcakes. If we've got those that are consuming the content of Facebook, we've got those that are creating the content on Facebook, and that's us as the businesses. So us, the business, the blog, the artist, the band, whatever you're trying to do on, online on social media. We're the creators. So we have a lot of tools <clears throat> as creators that consumers don't have. We have ways to reach an audience and ways to create things that regular people or regular customers on Facebook don't have. The only catch is that we need to activate that. So. Consumers have a profile. Creators have a page. And the names sound so generic, but they do technically have different meanings. Profile versus page. But they're so generic, I'm going to confuse them too. And I'm going to say, let's go to your, your business profile. I meant, let's go to your business page. So page is for the companies, the creators, profiles are for the people, the regular people, the consumers, your customers. Free and free. They're both free to set up. They're both free to set up. Here comes the double here comes the other of the double edged sort of things. For consumers, it's all completely free to set up and to use. Even though once in a while you get that chain letter that says Facebook is gonna start charging us to look at our friends as pictures. Facebook is gonna charge us to sign up and talk to our friends. No. For people it's going to still be free for people. What's is true is that Companies um, could have a paid usage. For companies, yes, they could charge you to use Facebook. We covered a little bit of it on previous networks in that Twitter could charge you, or Google and such, but we'll definitely hit it more today, because all of the networks nowadays not just Facebook, all networks have a paid aspect. Uh, could you mute your device, please? All networks have a paid aspect um, for you to reach more customers. So all of these networks have a way that you can pay to reach more people. And I want to say that right away because uh, when you're new to this stuff, people perhaps right away balk at it. Well, like, I have to pay the network. I, I, I thought it was free, and why would they charge? It's just online. Why are they charging me? I'll go into the details of why and how, of course, today as we go on. But I want to say early on, all networks have a paid aspect, and uh, the best results happen on Facebook or any network on the networks when you pay. Quotes on best, I'll explain that. This happens on all the networks, but it is 
even more true, apparently, on Facebook. Uh, and again, uh, there's two billion people on Facebook. And again, you're not the only, uh, you know, family-run tile business importing authentic Italian, you know, hand-cut tile. There's another company that does the same in the same city, if not on the same street. So um, one way that we can reach the right audience is to pay for it. And again, I'll cover those details about what that means exactly. But just to say that um, it is a real thing nowadays. It is a viable thing. And at, the, at, at least the good news, start with as little as $1. And we'll see the specifics of all of that, of course. But we're going to cover Facebook. We're going to see how it works for our business and uh, paid aspects and such. Question? Are you going to cover the ability or lack of ability to, to dictate geographically these paid? Definitely. One of the important things about finding your right audience oftentimes is physically where are they at. It doesn't matter that I pay $1,000 if I'm getting ca calls from England and I'm in San Diego. So yes, we'll be covering geo-targeting, definitely. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a Facebook account. How many of you already have a Facebook account from before the class? Most people. Now, how many of you, however, have the uh, business version of Facebook? It's just a page, right? It's just a page, exactly. So some of you have it, some of you don't. That's fine. We're going to set that up right now. So basically, use a personal profile to create as many business pages as you wish. Can, can yes. you have multiple personal profiles? You can, but they are tied to different email addresses. If I want to keep my personal to personal, create a dummy personal to mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. Yep, you, all you need is a valid email address, but one email address is tied to one personal which that one email can then be tied to many businesses. But if you want uh, one personal separate from everything else, you need a different email address. So one email address tied to one personal profile. Once you've got a personal profile, then you can create one or as many as you want business pages. Usually we, we only need one. I've got my business that I'm running, so I'm going to create one business page which is attached to my personal profile. And I could create different uh, business pages if I, if I wanted, one aspect for one thing and another. Sure. Most of us are just going to use one. And the good thing is that whatever personal stuff is, is here will not automatically show up here. Should not automatically show up. You could, whatever you post here, also show up here and vice versa. What you post here could also be shared back here. You could set that up if you want, but the default is that uh, your personal stuff is separate from your business stuff. Yes? So what if you're creating um, the business Facebook page for your company? Mm. Is there a certain way to do it rather than like inside your Yes, yeah, so we're going to cover those things uh, because the personal one has a has the purpose of connecting with friends and family, and the business one has the purpose of connecting with customers and such. So uh, we have different ways to set it up and different suggestions, and we'll cover it. Yeah. Well, you're just describing your, uh, the business page, and then there's a, a group page. Groups is like a third path of it all. I'm not really going to cover it, but I'll just write it down here. Uh, groups. Some groups are connected to certain parts of the company that they have options. They have different features also, and the closest analogy, if you were here for previous days, when we talked about Google+, yeah, we talked about communities. So in Facebook, groups are like communities in Google+. Okay. And then I'll, I'll cover here, so groups like Google+, communities. Uh, places where people congregate on a topic. Um, I, I don't get a lot of questions for people asking to, to get on groups. I should probably start including it at some point, but I don't quite cover groups because there's plenty of other things to yeah, talk about. So think about it though in that way. If you were here for Google Plus and we talked about communities, just think about using them sort of the same way. 
Question. Well, the thing that was most confusing when I said that the business page originally was there were different types of business pages and artist pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be covering that. And the, the point of that is that, yeah, uh, Facebook is trying to help uh, an entity as best as possible to find its audience. So if I'm an artist, I want to create a business page that is set up for an artist and they will kind of give features that are best for an artist. So that can be changed if we set it to the wrong one. Uh, so we'll see how to do that too. Okay, so uh, in the previous days, when we tried to create these networks, I had said, uh, just make it up completely fake, and uh, maybe just put a fake email address just to create the account, and it'll work fine. Here, good news, bad news, it's, I think it's going to be a lot easier to set up, because most of us probably already have a profile, a personal one. So we'll simply log in with that personal one. And then I'll show you how to create the business one. Or uh, you could go through the process of creating a brand new person on, on Facebook, although it's going to ask you for a different email address and all of that. So I think it's going to be more cumbersome to try to create a Facebook profile. I think we should just log in with our existing one. And then I'll show you how to create the business page. And again, in these public labs, when you turn off the computer, all that you've done on the computer will get erased. So if, uh, if you log in, you forgot to log out when you go home, these computers will reset. These computers will reset, so it will... Guys? These computers will reset, so you'll be able to do it. Question? Uh, well, make sure your, your computer's turned on, and then I'm going to show what to do. So um, we're about to then um, log into our account, and then we'll create a a profile, so the, uh, a page. So go ahead and open up any of the web browsers you like. We've got all the popular ones. And then we'll go to facebook.com. Go ahead and go to facebook.com. Now, it, it has come up several times throughout the years, these sort of hoax posts and such about Facebook's going to charge us. I'm not going to be able to talk to my friends and family unless I pay. So, so much of that is out there that Facebook itself has to say, it's free and always will be. Uh, asterisk that then says, for regular people. Uh, for businesses, that's a different story. And uh, when we get to the paying of that, we'll, we'll cover that, of course. Um, you're not going to be required to buy or pay for anything, of course, in the class. And whatever I talk about here in theory, you know, you could just digest it and think about doing it. You don't have to do this, but of course, it's helpful. Uh, and we'll cover that. But go ahead and log in with your Facebook account. If you don't have one, you, again, you can make one up. Uh, don't fall too far behind trying to make an account. Um, and um, go ahead and log in, and then I'll show you what to do after you log in. So I'll take a moment to, to log in. The idea, like I said, is you have a personal profile that then you could use to create one or more business pages. Um, you've got the business page attached to or connected to the personal profile. So after you log in, the first thing that you see is the personal Profile, the personal stuff. All my friends are right there ready to chat with me. People are asking for VGA cables. You know, it's all the personal stuff. So the default is you get the personal view. The default is that you get the consumer view. So then you log in to Facebook, you get the personal profile view. Consumer view. 
you have to switch to your business page. to use its features or create a business page which we'll do in a moment or create a business page to have those features now full disclosure I hate Facebook I don't like using Facebook I think it's too intrusive I don't like the philosophy behind it I don't like the people behind it I don't like Facebook for a personal profile, but for a business page, I love it. For business, Facebook is amazing. For personal, I hate it. It's too intrusive, it's too annoying. I'm going to be griping throughout the whole day what I don't like about it as a person, but I'm going to be praising what I love about it as a business. Question. Having said that, can you just put the business page in a personal profile? We're about to uh, create a business page that is attached to your personal profile. But does it have to be a personal profile? Yeah, if I try to create a business page directly, it, it will kind of reject it. And actually, that's a very good point. I forgot to say this. Let me back up one little thing. So then that's, very, that's a point that creates Yes. So I was about to forget. Very good point. Basically, the point for the personal profile. Very good point here. This is what I forgot to say. When we come to the Facebook screen and I'm about to create an account, uh, I, I think, okay, I want to create this account for my business. So I'm going to fill this in as my business. Victor's Bakery, blah, 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 birthday, 1971, whatever. No, you don't want to create an account on this screen here as your business. Because all of these networks have a terms of service that everyone agrees to, but no one reads. It's this little text right here. By clicking create here, you agree to our terms. And if you never saw that, that's a link to go read like a 10-page essay on what their terms are, on how they will and will not use your content, and how they will or will not help you, and, and so forth. All of the networks have this. All of them have a big old essay there that, you, that no one reads, but everyone agrees to. And the details, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer to fully de decipher what all of those things mean. Uh, but basically, the short answer is all of those terms really protect themselves in terms of you will not use Facebook to stalk people. You will not use Facebook to promote hate speech. You will not use Facebook to hack someone. You know, that sort of thing. They're covering themselves with that terms of service. And in there somewhere says something like, you will use Facebook the right way. And the right way is that when you sign up here, you are not creating a business here. You are creating it on another screen that I'm about to show. So all of the networks say you're going to use the, fit, use the accounts in the way that they were intended. So I'll make a note here. Do not, when creating a Facebook business page, do not create one from the main screen. Do not create one over at you know Facebook.com. That screen is there for you, and it says that all over the place with the verbiage, connect with your friends, sign up, what's your birthday, male, female. You know, it's not there asking you at all, create your business from that screen. So we shouldn't, should not create the business page from that screen. I'll show you the right page in a moment. And for us, we have to get past this screen to create the business page. And this is where, perhaps, yes, you can create a dummy account. You can create an, a fake account that's just set up in a way that I need a way to get into Facebook, and then I need to do what I need to do. But I don't want to connect it over to my you know, uh, Cox email account. I don't want to connect it to my personal Gmail. That's fine. That's a little bit of extra work that you might not need to do at the moment, um, just for our time constraints. So I would recommend, yes, log in within a, your existing Facebook account. Then I'll show you how to create the business page, which that one can be fake if you want, which then can be deleted. Um, so there are those nuances. You can delete, uh, you can delete business pages definitely, and you can and personal as well. It's kind of has you jump through a few hoops to delete the personal one, but in theory you can delete the personal one too, and definitely the business one. <clears throat> so. I've got the personal one here. I hardly log in, maybe once a month. Um, and uh, I, 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 once a month for personal stuff, for business stuff. 
um, I log in for clients. As I said, not only do I teach this, but I'm also part of a business that we do this for clients. We set up their Facebook, we run their Facebook, we do their promotions, we do their Twitter, etc. So I teach this, but I also do it for real clients. Question. Yeah. If I open a business account through my uh, existing profile, personal account, am I going to get a lot of emails and stuff? I don't have a business just for practice. If I want. No, uh, they're pretty good about not sending you a lot of spam emails. I think the other networks are worse. Um, you know, you sign up for Twitter and I'm getting emails all the time about new updates. Uh, I think Facebook, no, you don't have to worry about it. And I'll show you also where to go to, to set those settings so that you get only the emails that you want or no emails. So it shouldn't be flooding you with emails when you create a, a page. Can you get rid of those Twitter um you know, it emails you to kind of show you new features and things you might like and such. In the settings, there will be somewhere in the settings a, a place to turn those off. Okay, so this is this is the view uh, as a consumer. I'm a person. I see the stuff of my friends and family, maybe an ad or two, and so um, this is the personal consumer aspect of things. And I can tell because my name is right there, and there's my picture. It's the personal consumer profile. In my case, and you may not have this yet, but in my case, if you click on the little triangle there, try this. You click on that black triangle, which I'm sure has an official name, but if you click on that little triangle there next to the question triangle, on mine it says your pages, your business pages. And they use the term business very loosely because I've got a page about me teaching which is different about me, the person. Obviously, on, on me teaching, I keep it very professional and very and very proper. And then on my uh, and then on my personal one, that's where I show me doing keg stands and such. So the um, the pages here can be of anything you want, any business, any entity. But those are the business ones. Those are the pages. If you don't have that, that's our first task right here we're going to create a page. I have these three plus more businesses that I manage as part of the company I'm involved in. So I can manage all of these businesses and my personal stuff does not show up in them. So that's why I'm saying it's just a lot easier, yes, log in with your personal account and then we can create and manage multiple accounts. And in my case it makes sense on the side, I'm a social media marketer. They hire me and my company to run people's social media. They're too busy running their business. They hire me to run their social media, me and my team. So my stuff should not show up on their businesses. That would be catastrophic. Facebook has it set up that my personal stuff doesn't show up on these businesses unless I choose that. Yes? You know those numbers? Oh, sorry. Let me go back. Yes. Mm-hmm. These are notifications. Okay. There's activity. There's activity happening on each of these accounts. Okay. Right, okay, so if if the personal account is what I see first, I need to switch over to the business. If you don't have a business to switch to, if you click on your triangle and there's no business, our first step is we're going to go right here, create a page. If you already have a business that you're managing, you can use it. I would still sort of recommend create a brand new page just to play around with it, just to learn these different things we'll talk about. It can be deleted, and then what you've learned can be applied to your real account. So uh, the choice is yours there. I'm going to create page. Yes? What if um, a business page is already existing, and then they hand it over to you to manage? Like, what is the we have the ability to set up managers, and I'll show that in a little bit, where I'm given access to a page that someone else created, and I can log in with my password to manage that page. So everyone logs in with their credentials to manage one central page, and I'll show how to do that soon. I'll make a note of that to not forget. So when creating a Facebook page, do not create one from there. Uh, log in as personal account, then click the, again, it probably has an official name, uh, black triangle, and uh, switch or select 
your business page to manage it or select create page to create a page so uh, basically as soon as you log into Facebook you have to remember to switch over to your business page because that little spot there for you to start sharing a picture or a deal or whatever that's gonna happen on your personal account probably not where you want it you want it on your business so you have to switch to it I'm gonna create one just to show you what that looks like so I have something to, to work with and uh, also we'll come back to it uh, a page can have multiple managers everyone you designate or approve everyone you approve logs in with their own uh, email and password and has various levels of um, options to manage you can give people the ability for them to make any changes at all or minimal changes or certain changes you have these different levels of of access uh, we'll get to that but just keep in mind that multiple people can manage one page uh, yes the the there's one there's gonna be always one person that was the original creator they log in with their own password and, and they see it. There's always one person that creates it. Then they let other people also log in, but those people are going to log in with their own passwords. So everyone has their own password. But at least one person had to have created it first, and then they give access to everyone else. Um, so they ask you to take it over and take over their password? No, again, they're going to log in with their own password. You're, you're going to log in with your own email, your own password. It's just that someone has allowed you to get into that account. We'll see how to do that. Uh, and it could be that you're passing it from yourself to someone else, but most likely you still have access. It's just, a, it's just that you're giving other people also access to log in. Okay, so on the little triangle, I'm going to click on that and then create page. Notice if you've already got more than one page, uh, you have manage pages. And as you have at least one page that will be listed there, and then that's simply switching to that page to manage it. I'm going to create a page to show you that process to have something to work with. What I'm going to teach you, obviously, I don't want to do it with a real client at the moment. I'm going to go create page. And here's our first, uh, here's our first task. Well, what kind of business do you have? And when you set this up the first time, you can change it later. So if you already set this up before and you put it in the wrong category, you can change this. I'll show you how. But our first task here is, are you a local business? Are you a company or a brand? The differences, basically, the different features and such. The big difference is in local business. This one does require that you fill in a, a street address and a phone number. Because Facebook is free to set up. Anyone can. They just need a valid email. Well, the problem is, what's to stop your competitor from creating a Facebook page in your name and then doing terrible things in your name on Facebook? What's to stop them is they have to fill in your address, your phone number, and Facebook will verify, will call, will send a postcard to you to verify you are the real person at that location. For us at the moment, if we're creating like a testing account here, I would not do the local business, even if you've got a local business, because you have to put a real address and a phone number, and at the moment you're not at your business to answer the phone when Facebook does the automated call to check if you're the real deal. So just for testing purposes, company is fine, because we only need to choose a category and a name. Yeah. Can they call the cell phone? If you've got your business set up using that cell phone, they can. But like this is coming from like let's say the phone book and such. So if your business doesn't have that cell phone, it won't work. So I still don't recommend to 
put a phone number here, but if it's if you're doing it at home or where your business is at, then a cell phone will work. These other ones, brand or product uh, companies like let's say Coca-Cola, they have their main Coca-Cola Facebook page, but then they've got a page for all their products. You know what else do they have? Coca-Cola, Coke Zero, Diet Coke. They might have a page for all of those individual products because all of those individual products have their own demographics. Coca-Cola, I believe they they own Coke, they own Dasani water, they own Powerade, I believe. So that's three different types of drinks. Someone that wants water, someone that wants a, a, you know a sports beverage, and someone that wants sugar water. So all three of them have a demographic. Therefore, Coca-Cola can create a brand for each one of those products, a brand page. You might have a nonprofit organization. There it is, cause or community. You may be a writer, an author. You know, there's different ones here, and these can be changed. I'm going to go with company. I'm going to do a business here called Victor's Bakery. When I talked about this in the other networks, remember we had full name and username. Full name. The longer non unique identifier of your business. The username. The shorter unique identifier of your business. Often your URL, your web address. I'm about to create a business called Victor's Bakery. I can create a business called Victor's Bakery or City of San Diego or CNN or I can create a business with any name that I want at all in this screen that it's asking me right here and it will let me there's obviously already the city of San Diego on Facebook there's obviously already UCSD and Facebook but I can create in this screen here a brand new account called UCSD it will let me because on the next screens is where then I can choose the username which is unique that only one entity in the world can have just like with Twitter I can create a brand new Twitter account right now called UCSD and it will let me but when it gets to the screen pick a username and if I try to pick UCSD it'll say it's taken so I have to do UCSD number two or UCSD with underscores or the UCSD Facebook is the same I can put any name I want here at all it's pretty loosey-goosey about it and then here on username if that name's already taken you can't have it and of course, as we talked before, the downside of that is I've had my family business for 40 years. I just got the great idea this year to get on Facebook, even though Facebook's been around almost 15 years. And so I'm about to get on Facebook for the first time. Oops, my business's name is taken by someone 10 years ago, one year ago, one month ago. If someone else already took the name, I pretty much I can't get it. Someone else took it. These networks, when someone takes the name, that's it. They took it. And they really should you know, take back the names that no one's using. Sometimes people create a name, they, then they get bored with it, they never use it, and I want that name, but someone took it and they haven't used it for three years. Facebook, none of the networks give back names. They keep saying they're going to. They've been saying that for five years. Uh, I don't know if they will. So I can't get Victor's Bakery on username next screen. I'll have to get original Victor's Bakery or the Victor's Bakery or amazing Victor's Bakery I don't know you have to pick something else if someone already took it that one is unique uh, that's on the next screen on the current screen I can make an account called Victor's Bakery but that one is not tied to the web address choose a category which I can change and there's plenty to choose from I think we've got food in here Let's see, chemical college nonprofit, uh, whatever will be fine. Um, retail company. I'll click. Oh, and then again, right above it, the terms of the page. The thing that no one reads, everyone agrees to. And even if you do read it, you probably won't get it. I don't get it completely. But they're all really about covering their themselves. 
and us as the companies, we have some protections about our copyrights and all of that, of course. Uh, but it's basically saying you're not going to abuse the system. Click Get Started. Depending, every time I teach this, this is a little bit different because depending on various factors, people might get step one of two or one of three or one of four. I don't know, it changes for different people for different reasons. Facebook and all of these companies are constantly kind of changing themselves behind the scenes to improve themselves. When I taught this a few months ago, this asked for like five things before you were able to get into your account. At the moment, it seems to be, for me, asking for two things, which I can also skip in efforts most likely to make it easier to set up to get people into the account. But in my case, it's asking for step one, a profile picture, which is the little icon that represents your business. And on the next step here would be the, uh, the cover photo, which is a larger image to show off at the top here. I don't have these pictures handy at the moment. I'm going to skip both. Question. Profile picture does, does that have to be picture? Well, you tell me. Is are you the face of your business? Yeah. Yes. But, but I guess the question is that as a as a photographer or as a creative person. I might want something later. Exactly. You can put whatever you want here, but if it makes sense that you are the face of your business, so if I'm doing Victor's Bakery and uh, I'm, I'm the face of my business, I'm the personality of the business, I probably want to put some pictures there of myself. It's perfectly fine instead that I put pictures of the cupcakes and that I put my logo instead of my, my self. That's fine. They should use a slightly different name there. They call it profile photo, thinking like a person. But no, it doesn't have to be a person. It's whatever graphics you want that represent your business. Let me do a little segue here on a on a different on a different screen here. Um, let me see here, San Diego. Just randomly gonna look up Facebook accounts. Okay, uh, we'll do this one. Okay, so here it is, the San Diego's official Facebook account. Just randomly just to show you something. So on Facebook's account, on uh, San Diego's Facebook account, they've got the official San Diego logo, I guess. Um, so that's the logo of San Diego. Um, their, their full name is Visit San Diego. And then their username on the next screen that we will see is San Diego. So the, the long name that it just asked me for, the full name, is that, Visit San Diego. That was allowed. And then uh, the short name is San Diego. And the address also shows it, facebook.com slash San Diego, not visit San Diego. That's the difference that I'm saying here. Full name, the longer non-unique one, and username, the shorter unique one, and it's part of the address. Question? Uh, will you talk about later about uh, using a motion picture than a still picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the... Browsers, where the browsers are nowadays. Yeah, we'll cover this. So notice here, it's asked, uh, here, San Diego's got a cool little drone photo of flying over the, where is that over there? Maybe like Shelter Island area, perhaps? Um, so um, they've, got a, they've got a video there as their cover photo right now here in, uh, and my setup, it's, it's asking upload a cover photo. There is a way to add a, a video, definitely. Uh, and uh, if the, if the browser or the device can't handle the video, it'll just show the first shot of the video, so it'll still be a static image. <clears throat> yeah. So um, I opened a page of their art, uh, and I went to the setting and made it unpublished, but that works just for the sake of learning. I don't want to see. Yeah, there's a setting also that we'll get to that says unpublished, that no one will see it until you make it public. So, so they can still do you know, Yes. You can still fully set up your account, just no one will see it yet. Now I also showed here this particular example randomly as the idea, okay, this is a city and it's using Facebook to promote, you know, tourism and all of that. So every entity has um, uh, some sort of Facebook profile and they've even got a phone number here 
to call San Diego. Uh, I wonder if the mayor will pick it up. Who knows? And so uh, here is their logo and their video. Let me pick another random entity. I'm just showing this uh, as a way that I, I said in other for other accounts. Um, okay, let's try this. Uh, it wasn't fa it wasn't UCSD automatically, so I'll search Facebook UCSD page. UC San Diego. Okay, they're going with UC San Diego instead of UCSD. So facebook.com slash UC San Diego. Everyone here probably would have thought UCSD, right? Not UC San Diego. Anyway, so they've got um, their own Facebook page. They've got guys a library right there. They've got an octopus attacking Tory Pines. The, they're, they're attacking the nudists in Black Beach right there, I guess. Uh, and um, okay, that's, their, that's how they're doing theirs. Um, and again, they're promoting, you know, come to UCSD and such. Uh, again, okay, here's Facebook's strike one for the day. It <clears throat> keeps popping up. Don't forget to sign in. If you want to see any more, sign in. You know, yes. sign in. You can't enjoy Facebook unless you sign in. Okay, strike one. So, get inspiration. I'm doing this to get inspiration from other accounts. Look at how they, they didn't put the UCSD logo there. They didn't put the, you know, the mascot there. They put a photo, an artistic photo of the library. Then up here, you have this fanciful photo, those who change the world see the world differently. Uh, and then they've got a link there, which is not an active link. You cannot click that to go there. You have to type it manually. Um, let's see, something else. Um, McDonald's. Okay, so with McDonald's, they've got their logo. They've got all of these photos of people enjoying the food all over the world. And the coffee and selfies and everything. So this is a way to do this as well. This is a way to do this as well in that you can do these photos. You can do one like panorama shot. You can do a video. You have a lot of ability to customize. And that's the purpose of what this screen is. these screens are saying. I can't set them up at the moment. I don't have the photos. I can do it later. I'm going to skip it. OK, then eventually it takes me to my actual uh, page. It may be popping up to say, invite your friends. Let me make a note, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Invite your friends. Let me come back to that. I'll just close that there. So it's going to be popping up to tell me, publish your first post, invite your friends. We'll cover all of this, of course. I'm just going to close that. But then I get to my profile, and at the moment, At the moment, my um, my Facebook business page exists. Everyone could come to it right now. It's public. All of this is public by default. Everyone could come and like the page and all that great stuff. I could start to build my followers. Great. Just like I mentioned on previous days, before you try to build followers, on any of these profiles, you want to fully set them up. So I'll mention here again, and we'll, we'll look at some of these things. Before building followers, set up your account. Question? When I was adding this company, I kept adding my personal contacts. Mm -hmm. let me let me come back to that one that's the same as invite your friends your personal contacts yeah I'll, let me come back to that uh, so before building your followers set up your account add logo profile cover photo add at least three different posts I mentioned that on the previous days as well why would someone follow your account if you have nothing to show for it you have a pretty logo and a pretty cover page, but nothing else. What are you sharing? We'll see that down here. We'll be able to share a photo, a link, a video, all this great stuff. The the social of social media, the the marketing purpose of social media. So before trying to build followers and likes and all of that, you need to at least have the basics of it set up. Also, uh, complete your bio all this biographical info and biographical info sounds like a person 
but it also applies to a business. Street address, if necessary, phone number, about the company, we'll, we'll cover all of that. Uh, and then some content to show people what they're in for if they click follow. Because all of these networks, we're trying to get people's attention. Uh, so by our content, we convince people to follow us. When they follow us, they become our target audience. And then, as I said previously, because the 1% of your followers usually are the ones that really act on things. I have 100 followers, and probably one or two are really going to buy. So the more followers I get, the bigger that 1% is. And you may be amazing. You may have a global presence like McDonald's, and you have more like 25% of your million followers or 10 million followers actually buy. But for us smaller companies, really 1% of our followers are the serious ones. And so we, we have to get more and more followers. From this screen, um, this is where it says create page username. I won't do it for real, but here is where you would choose your username because at the moment, my web address, if people wanted to visit my web address, my URL on Facebook, it is this. Facebook.com slash victors dash bakery dash gibberish. So that's the address people would have to type to get to my page. That's the address I would have to put on my business card or on my, uh, you know, flyer. It really rolls off the tongue, right? I want simply Victor's Bakery. I want it to be very, very short and memorable like this. I just want Victor's Bakery. Well, we set that up right there. Create username. I won't go through the process because this is just a fake account. But if you are creating a real account, you do that right there. It's uh, easier for people to find you if you've got a short name. OK, great. I'm going to use Victor's Bakery. And this is, again, this gets to the point where if um, someone else already took it, oh, someone already took it, there's bakery. OK, well, I have up to 50 characters here. It actually increased it. It used to be only like 15. So that's good. So I could do, OK, I'll do the Victor's Bakery. That one got the blue check mark. I could, I could claim that one. And that's what I'm saying, that that's a unique one, that only one entity in the whole world can have it. So if there is a Victor's Bakery in England, They've got it. If someone created a Victor's Bakery in the Philippines, but they haven't used it in five years, they've got it. If someone created a Victor's Bakery down the street, my competitor before me, they've got it. And I don't really have real recourse to take it back. Us little people, we can't really do that. If we're big, if we're a big entity and have lawyers and such, we might be able to get that name. But most of us will have to settle for a different kind of a name. No apostrophes, no exclamation points, you know, no special symbols. Capitalization is fine, but uppercase and lowercase is the same. So right there, it's not letting me do uppercase or lowercase, uh, meaning it's taken. Uh, and the capitalization is just there for uh, readability. I can read that word a little better because there's capitals than if it was all lowercase. See, can we do dashes, no dashes, underscores, no underscores, and no spaces. I think also, OK, uh, yeah, no dots. Uh, oh, no, actually, dots are OK. This username is already taken, but the dot is already, the dot is usable, but that name's taken. So I'm going to do the original Victor's Bakery. That one's available. Again, I'm not going to actually claim it, uh, but that would be my brand new Facebook address, facebook.com slash the original Victor's Bakery. And the problem is that even though we've got 50 characters, I would try to create a concise one, a short one, because again, if you're going to tell people in person, yeah, visit my Facebook page, facebook.com slash the original Victor's Bakery. It's kind of a lot to say. It can confuse people. If you're putting that on a business card or a flyer or something, there's more to read, more to misspell. So maybe just The Victor's Bakery or Victor's Bakery SD. But then does that mean Victor's Bakery San Diego or Victor's Bakery South Dakota? So it might not matter, but these are things to think about. And for the notes, this also applied on the other networks uh, regarding username. 
try for a short memorable memor memorable pronounceable pronounceable I don't have spell check on that try for a short memorable pronounceable name as the username try for it if you do need to put all that important stuff about your name that it is all of this you know San Diego uh, San Diego Wellness and Health Center of La Jolla you know if it has to be like that then okay put the whole thing um, but just know that you're gonna have a long name that might be a little difficult for people to type or to find or to remember I'm gonna cancel that We'll look at one screen here, and then we'll take a little break. Um, again, your goal is when you've got a Facebook page, you're going to fill in that profile photo, either your logo, a little shot of your product, yourself, if you're the face of your company, whatever. It's a little square shape. Then over here, we've got a rectangular shape of a, of a photo, uh, which can be a photo or a video. Notice up here, photo or video. Choose a photo, choose a video, upload a photo or video, or create a slideshow. So if you've already got photos in Facebook, you can combine them together into a slideshow. You want to fill both of those. You want to claim your username. And then one more thing. Um, over on, um, let's see, they put it over here. You have these different navigation screens. You probably see See More. And under See More, we should see About. We'll look at this, then we'll take a break. Go to this About screen. It's probably hidden inside of the rest of the menu here. About. Uh, these are things to fill in also for a more complete profile. Here's where you can go back and change the category if you put it in the wrong one. Here's where you can change the full name, which is not unique. Here's another place for you to do the username. A story, tell people about your business. So a narrative piece with a photo that tells about your business. Maybe the founding myth of it, or your goals, or the people in the business. And there's several of these little spots for you to fill in these things. Details, when did the, when did the business start? What's the mission? What's the phone number, email? So all of this about information has a few purposes. This is for all the networks. About screen info purposes. For people to understand what your business is, what they should expect to get from it, you know, what's uh, why would they care? You're yet another realtor, yet another bakery, yet another daycare. What's different or special about you? That's what you could be explaining in this about info. Um, it's also uh, for people, uh, for SEO, uh, search engine optimization. This is the whole art and the science of getting found when people search. So search engine optimization optimization for when people search for self promotion so the right customers find you we saw in the previous networks that we have search, and we can use search to find things in Twitter, find things in Google+, find things in Facebook. I need to find a plumber. I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm going to search in Facebook. I get a list of plumbers. If I'm filling out information here that is relevant to that per person searching for the plumber, I may be found. I may be then get a new customer. Question. Um, so if you write a new like plumber, that will be your uh, SEO. Just by writing the one simple word plumber is the starting point to do SEO. SEO is a big old topic, which is why I have another class at this college all about SEO, and I sprinkle it in through these classes. Short answer is that as we use these keywords and phrases and terms, those are the things that people are searching for. 
So if I need to find a plumber in San Diego, if somewhere in my about info I'm putting here, you know, we are the best plumbers in San Diego. Those are the words someone's searching for that may help me get found. It's a bigger ball of wax than that, but the short answer is that yes, the keywords that I'm filling in in here is the concept of SEO to help me get found. Yes? It's not exact phrase types, it's just any combination of the words. It's a whole long spiel to fully explain it, but it is the different combinations of words and concepts, yes. Yes? I went to edit my short business name, mm -hmm. my short one. Uh, the username. I want to create a new business page, so you can't easily edit the name. Mm -hmm. You mean this username here? Or where? Uh, no, like the name of no, you should be able to edit the name of your business right here under About. I see, click Edit, and then uh, that's going to let me change it right there. If yours looks a little different, we're going to take a break in a moment, and then, we'll, and then I'll see what's happening there. So this screen here has a variety of things to fill out that, that you should fill out in order to um, uh, have yourselves be more legitimate. Here's another reason here, purpose. Uh, to increase or improve legitimacy. Improve legitimacy. Imacy, legitimacy. To improve legitimacy, um, again, as I touched on at the beginning of the day, there's a lot of spam bots, there's a lot of trolls, there's a lot of harassers, there's a lot of bad stuff online, unfortunately. And so for you to appear like the legitimate representative of this business that you're not some sort of uh, hacker or whatever or foreign agent or whatever the more of this that you fill out that is true that is real that is uh, that is proper makes you more legitimate and it also helps your your visibility in search and rankings and all of that so uh, you want to fill all of this in at some point a uh, little note here then we'll take a break team members these people manage the Victor's Bakery page and have chosen to have the profile appear in their profile and their name appear in the page. So you automatically are the manager of this page that you created and your personal stuff does not show up on this business page. And that's very good for me because I manage different businesses. If I were to add myself as a team member, then my picture would appear linked to this page. And in my case, that might be fine because I'm Victor the founder of Victor's Bakery, so my picture will appear. But you saw up here that I manage these other businesses as well. And I, it doesn't make any sense for my name or my picture to appear linked or associated with those businesses. So you have to decide if that makes sense for you to, um, to add yourself as a, as a team member. And when we talk a little bit in a moment about also adding other managers to the page, they can add themselves there. So all the people behind, you know, who are the people that are behind Victor's Bakery? That's where they will appear. Yeah. So if you add your, yourself to a team member, somebody going to your business page, they'll look all through your profile, your personal profile? They will at least see that you, the person, and your personal profile is there and then depending how you have your settings of your personal account they will then see stuff so if you've got your personal profile set pretty privately they should only see what you've allowed to be public if you've uh, set your personal to be very open then yes then they'll see everything if you're if you're visible here but if you don't add yourself as a team member with no link to your personal page exactly That'll be separate. Okay, so uh, that's a few things to think about. We'll take our first break. Um, possible things to fill in here. We'll look at other screens, of course. We'll, we'll talk about the power user moves and all of that for a page. We'll talk about also the paid aspects, how to get followers and all of that. Uh, it's 10.45. We'll take a break uh, 10 minutes. We'll be back at 10.55 and we'll go on.